keeping us alive now. You forget about that one. And you keep them coming in. You're doing well, son. Find us on the web at mbradio.us. I want to make it clear that the views expressed by our hosts are not considered the official stance of MBR views. Remember, this is all about having fun and enjoying the ride. Welcome to Gunslinger's Tavern. I'm Audrey McHugh. I'm a bisexual, open woman that served in the military, Brownwater Navy, shout out to my Airedales. One in three veterans experience military sexual trauma. Here we use whiskey for good and talk about all different events that affect veterans and how we can do better to make sure that no one has to release their burden of rape at these gates anymore and ensure that veterans' lives are advocated and lived for. Hi everyone, Audrey McHugh here at Gunslinger's Tavern, where we find drinks and questions. And I have the proud honor of showing you guys what it's like to be a mom. Um, so here's Katie. She's the owner of Boots on Ground Coffee Company, also a veteran. And so her son has been a little bit sick. And um, so he's going to probably pop in on the show with us a little bit. So just stand by, y'all. <laughs> So, Katie, welcome. Um, so, it's almost Veterans Day. That's this weekend. So, what branch are you? And what made you want to join the military? Um, I was in the Navy. I made for- you so cool. You were on Navy. Nice. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you just hear him? <laughs> Do you want to go to the bathroom? Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Um, so I was in the Navy. Um, I didn't want to go to school. I joined when I was a junior in, in high school. So I was in the debt program for well over a year. I was one of the longest people to be in the program or one of the people in the program, the longest, whatever. Um, I hope you got an award for that. <laughs> I, actually, I went in as an E3, so it worked out. <laughs> right. I made rank pretty fast. Um, he's getting me sick. Sorry. All bad, and yeah. Um, yeah, when I was a junior, I was just like, ah, I don't really want to stay in the area. I don't want to go to school, like college or anything. So I'm like, I'll join the Navy. My grandpa was in the Navy and my brother had always wanted to join the military. And surprisingly, he never ended up joining the military. But mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm getting out of here. And I the guidance counselor called the recruiter and he came out the next day and I was just like, yeah, sign me up. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, no. Like, I don't care. <laughs> they probably like it easier that way. So what was your MOS? Uh, what was your rating? So people don't understand what that means. That means her job, right? So. I was a cook. I was a culinary specialist. Oh, so you can make food. Live baby. Okay. <laughs> he needs coffee. So how long did you serve in the military? And, I was uh, in for 10 years. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes. That's what's up. And what made you decide to get out? Was it just um, it wasn't in alignment of what you wanted anymore? You decided to start a family. Um, that kind of shift for you. Um, well, I essentially got involuntary, involuntarily separated, Mm. um, still honorable discharge, but I didn't have a family care plan after I had my son. So so kick me out. (laughs) I, um, am very much against that policy. And I I hear that the army's really good about like families and all of that stuff. And I was like, maybe I should have joined the army. (laughs) They're really bad about the rates of rapes in the military though. Um, um, yeah, they have I one of the cool. highest ones for me. I do a lot of legislation, um, work, and so to still have so many occurrences happening after Vanessa died, and there's been so many different assaults on that base, it's the leadership at this point. Um, and they have been told that they need to implement these policies. And I would say the Navy, the Air Force is maybe doing a little bit better in that area, but the Army really does. Um, that's not a proud statistic I would want to have with that whatsoever. But yeah, I would say a lot of policies that they make 
around women in general are horrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> horrible, horrible kind of policies that they don't understand. I'm grateful now that the CNO of the Navy, the 33rd, is a female. Um, so she finally just got confirmed after nine months uh, because of a man, of course, who all he did right. in life was, uh, was coach football. And um, they did this only after the Marine Commandant literally had a heart attack. And so there's still hundreds of military nominations that are still being held up by Tommy Tuberville, who does absolutely nothing for the state of Alabama. So that's just a, that's just a thing. Um, so Katie, what was your most favorite memory in the Navy? One yeah. second. He went to, I need to go fix him quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, guys, we are standing by. Um, just so you know, like, this is normalcy, right? Like, um, moms got to take care of their kids. And so instead of her canceling and rescheduling the show, she did what any sailor would do. She'd be like, the show must go on. And so uh, we might have some interruptions in here, but we're going to make sure that she takes care of her her baby first and foremost. So, all right, guys. So while we're waiting, oh, see, look at that. Boom. She hurried up and waited me. It was like, boom, already there. <laughs> I did not want those problems that was about to come from that. He just no. got down in the bathroom. He likes to run around without fixing all of that. And I don't need that smeared across the apartment. Right. <laughs> you. Yes, you have an owie. Okay, so my favorite memory of the Navy. Yeah. Um, there is a hole in your leg. Um, there's a lot of favorites, I think. Um, I did three as many as you want. You will have to limit one. You <laughs> well, I did three deployments, so I did a lot of traveling, and I was stationed in Italy working for a four-star admiral on a NATO base. So I made a lot of friends like from other nations' military, right. which was yeah. amazing. I love no, the Germans. They're they're so day. chill and relaxing. No, oh, they're great drinkers. Yes, great drinkers great and the Brits. And they chill. And the Brits. They're great. You can, but I need to look. I'm doing something. Do you see this? Okay, <laughs> go play. <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> um. Yeah, I just I did a lot of traveling and I think I had a lot of experiences and opportunities that were really like shaping for who I am, I guess. Right. But. <laughs> yeah. Did you drink with the British Royal Marines? No, I think it was the Royal Navy. I actually don't know the difference because they all just kind of merged together on the Navy <laughs> base and they were just like one little click. I don't really right. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I would say the Royal Navy and the British Royal Marines are some, they get down. Um, yeah. Um, when I was, <laughs> when I was <laughs> yes, you will, now go. When I was in Italy, I was part of the, the field gun crew. And okay. so that's like the British games where they like run the big cannon like down, they take it apart, they put it together, they fire off a bunch of stuff and they like run it. I was part of that. And so we ended up going to the UK for the competition and it was so much fun. And like, I swear every night they were out drinking and I'm like, I don't know how we're functioning right now. <laughs> Spoilers. That's how we run function. over by this cannon. <laughs> and yet nothing happened. <laughs> Surprisingly, it turned right. out. <laughs> that means the functioning was better. <laughs> yeah, for them probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so did you have you ever drink um like Blanton's? Obviously, that's my um my IG name I've known for for whiskey. Um, do you have a favorite whiskey? Um I don't really like whiskey. I actually don't drink anymore. I, I quit drinking after my wedding last year. <laughs> um, but I love mojitos. I love margaritas. I I don't really like whiskey. It's not my favorite thing in the world. But yeah. I think 
Yeah, vodka, rum. All right. Tequila, tequila shots, you know, back in the day. <laughs> Woo. It's yeah, like my wild years. I need to be sober for a while. My liver. Right. <laughs> I'm going to drink my, my water and be a vodka Trump today and say no comment. And I don't remember from tequila days in the military. <laughs> I just, um, yes. I, yeah, I, uh, I kind of want to keep that one on. Oh, well, I've already told enough stories about some of those days. <laughs> They're like, and I'm like, I already put everything out there, right? So when I'm working in politics and stuff, it's like, what yeah I, I got a funnier one right like if y'all are gonna try to blackmail with that let me let me make sure you know i got this story it's even better yeah. <laughs> it's like even better y'all uh -huh. <laughs> those pictures bro i got better ones just ask right <laughs> i just don't care at this point because all i do is advocate work for veterans who are um being killed in this country or out of this country and so you know, I'm relentless in that, um, in my passion to make sure that we take care of each other. So, um, so you tra transitioned out of the military. Yes. Did you feel like it was an easy transition? I know you said your husband is still, um, still in. And so what we have found that a lot of the transitions for so many of us is, even though we have this TAP class that I'm sorry, I don't think it's adequate. Um, a lot of veterans struggle as they get out of the military for numerous reasons. We don't have our family support system anymore. We kind of lost the whole family. Um, and even when you're a civilian, your civilian family doesn't understand and the length of time their whole life has gone on without us. And so it's really hard to integrate back into that because they just mm -hmm. don't understand us because they haven't lived with service or sacrifice. And um, so I'm just interested to kind of find out maybe how your your transition was and then maybe like what made you say coffee? I, I'm a <laughs> and I love it because okay. <laughs> I make coffee like slug, right? Like I drink coffee Whoa. like it has to have the darkest blackness oh, at the bottom in order for me to drink it. And I feel like we do make the strongest. Like sailors, we do make the coffee that makes people stay up for days. Yeah. And a lot of branches are envious of that. So yeah, talk about maybe your transition and then what led you into the world of coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. I'm sorry. I love it. Usually he goes away for a little bit. Hey, I'm talking to people right now. Anyways. <laughs> um, transitioning was hard. Yeah. Uh, so when I initially got out, so I knew that I didn't have a family care plan and I knew I was going to get kicked out. And so in February of 2021, I started planning. And in September of 2021, I was out September 30th, I think was my last day. And so I was out within that year. So I had already been planning in February of 2021. And I was like, well, I don't want to work for anybody else. So what am I going to do? And I was stationed out in Washington already. And they have like little coffee shacks everywhere. And I loved it. And there's not really that type of thing in Wisconsin. So I was like, I think that'd be really cool to, you know, bring to Wisconsin. Now my area is very small. And I was like, I don't want to be stuck in like one spot because I don't think that it will hit it off in like one location. Like right. a lot of older people in some of the communities and like, Mama, you ready? so we got a trailer. Mama, you ready? Yeah. Daddy? So, and that's Daddy? how I, Daddy? <laughs> that's why I ended up I'm with a coffee Daddy? trailer and go. That's how I ended up with a coffee trailer that I was right. running. And... So I managed that until June of this year, and then I sold it. And that's why when you look me up on Facebook, I come up with a coffee trailer. <laughs> um, so I, I do love coffee, and it's funny because I had never really liked 
actual coffee and then I got stationed in Italy and I was started drinking the espresso over there and I was like oh my god this is so good like the world needs this and then I just became a coffee addict <laughs> so it was Italy's fault um, but yes transitioning out was hard going from me and my child because my husband had already transferred we weren't married yet but he had already transferred to Illinois mm -hmm. and so it was just me and my kid for right almost right. a year and so going from basically alone in your house with your child and like you know your work family to moving in with my mom temporarily mm -hmm. and I was like so overwhelmed and I'm like this is so hard and I hate it and like I was like there's got to be something wrong with me like why am I so angry and I was angry because there was just people around all the time that were like more in your business than when they are like when you're in yeah like your personal things you know like mm -hmm. oh well what are you doing today like none of your business get out of here <laughs> and I'm like oh wait that's my mom <laughs> So that was, that was really hard. That I think that was the hardest thing for me was getting used to having people around like all the time and like not being across the world from my family. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's yeah. hard. I especially know with like my PTSD, um, like some of my family didn't understand how triggering some things could be. And um, they were trying to be helpful, but how they went about it was just actually uh, worse and it made all of it worse. So, you know, like sometimes it comes from a place of love, but I think love has understanding. And so when you have um, a kid that's in the military and you're so happy to share that with everyone and say, hey, my kid's serving here and they're doing this, but then you kind of don't learn about PTSD or really understand it, it's kind of like a, a disservice, right? Because you're so awesome about bragging about how your kid's in the military, and then your kid has PTSD, and then you don't want to actually understand anything with it. And it's just like, well, how do you think this works? <laughs> how do you think this gets better if you don't start kind of trying to have some kind of level of understanding? Mm -hmm. So I know you sell um, coffee, right? <laughs> Yes. And maybe talk about a little bit like that. And then maybe, so I'm going to show that your, your brand here first. So it's totally dope. I like this. Uh, so I hope that everyone can kind of see it. It's combat boots uh, with coffee, um, coffee beans in the boots and the leaves itself. And so I think that's so creative. Um, so what made you design that as your logo? And then what your different brands. And then where can we purchase um, purchase them for consumption? Okay, so my logo, I had like the idea. So one of the um, businesses in town that I actually grew up working at, his daughter ended up joining the army and she got out for medical reasons. And I was like, hey, I wanna start this brand. Oh, so when I was about to like knowing, oh, I'm gonna be leaving with my husband eventually. So I need to sell the trailer. And I'm like, well, then what am I gonna do? Because I still don't wanna work for anybody else. And then I decided to start a brand not affiliated with the business that I already had. So which is where Boots on Ground came from and mm -hmm. the whole situation with Vanessa and um, Denisha. Is that her name? Montgomery? Yeah. Montgomery Smith. Yeah. Yes. And that's part of the reason why I take 10% and donate it to organizations. I do a lot of um, military sexual assault organizations that we donate to, um, PTSD organizations. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a, a lot of different ones that we've donated to because we've been mm -hmm. around for almost a year. At the end of this month, it'll be a year. Awesome. But. Well, <laughs> Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Well, you we were going to talk about the different brands, but I think I want to highlight, highlight, highlight that a little bit, right? Because, um, you know, Denisha Montgomery Smith was murdered, um, 0809, 2022. She's had no justice and, um, she was sexually assaulted, raped and for cover up for, for drugs on a base by this command in Germany. And um, nobody's really brought attention to it. Brooke was 
character has now transitioned out of the army. And so um, I am hopeful that she will, you know, what we're going to start advocating and really trying to get justice because politicians last February said they were going to have a congressional inquiry. Uh, and Chuck did not do that. He literally just wanted people to like his post. And then they absolutely did nothing what they said they were going to do to actually open a congressional inquiry to her. So that is a, a big injustice. But I just want to say, like, I think it's incredible that one, you're past the, the one year mark for your business. But at the same time, you chose to give back to veterans. Right. And so I can definitely relate to that because. You know, I have a house that's for my my Airbnb and then veterans get to stay there or first responders get to stay each month. And then I kind of have them on a healing um, journey for um, board sport therapy or hiking so they can um, recover from being raped. And so I feel like you're a lot like me that like you said, OK, I'm going to start this, but I'm still going to give back to my brothers and sisters where in your first year, it's very, very hard. Um, you know, growing your business. And most people wouldn't have even thought about okay. donating or doing any of that. And bravo to you for supporting your veteran community and saying, you know what, even though this is my first year and I'm, I'm growing, I'm still giving back. I'm still yeah. giving back. So, I mean, that is, that's an amazing thing that you chose to do that. So salute to you for that. And so um, you you have some coffee that we can um, consume. So <laughs> what are your brands? Um, they have some cool names. Yeah. And um, so, you know, what are they and where can we get them? Um, also, the logo, I would have to give a shout out because it was actually an Air Force military spouse that so I had the idea of the other army girl, that's what it was. The other army girl, you know, was like, oh, it'd be really cool, you know, boots with like coffee grounds or coffee, you know, coming out of it. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. And I couldn't like graphically design something up. So there is one, I cannot remember the name, uh, Brushwork Impressions is the name of it. And she's an Air, Air Force spouse and she does incredible work. She painted my logo and that's the logo that's on everything now. Okay, but my my um, <laughs> blends that I have. So I, we have three new blends. Two of them are limited time um, holiday blends. And we have a brand new decaf that just launched November 1st. Um, <laughs> I know. I got a lot of requests because there's a lot of uh, veterans. I know, in there, like I've... old men. <laughs> so they want to decaf. Okay. But... Okay, you can take it out. Buy her decaf. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so we have Midwatch, which is our darkest, boldest roast. So there's Midwatch. And then there's Got Your Six, which is our medium roast. There's Scuttlebutt, which is the light roast. That's my personal favorite. It's so smooth. Okay. It's delicious. I absolutely love it. And then we have Artillery Espresso. That one has like little okay. hints of vanilla in it. It's so good. <laughs> and it has like so much crema on top. It's... Mm. You can just drink it by itself. And then, oh. what is that, four? Okay, and then I have my decaf called MIA decaf. And on the bag, it says honoring um, missing in action. And I was like, oh, that, that would be a nice little touch. So my roaster hooked it up. <laughs> and then we have the two limited edition holiday ones are Home for the Holidays, which is a coconutty, caramely kind of like something's baking in the oven type of home, home for the holidays. And yeah. then we have... Christmas care package, which is a minty one, because I love mint, so I needed a mint one. It's okay. No, not yet. Oh, yeah, it is. Huh? Okay. Go play. <laughs> he found his sand. We're good for a little bit. All right. We got the time. All right. Good diversion. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so, so, yeah, that's what I have. Um, okay. If you want to buy it, I have an Etsy, which those go directly to my roaster, those orders, and you can only buy coffee on my Etsy. If you want to buy, I have these shirts. I have brown tan that you can wear under a uniform, but don't tell anybody because you're not supposed to wear like a logo thing, but I got it to match the color. So 
throwing that out there. And then I got a flat. <laughs> I keep trying to get my husband to wear one. <laughs> he works down at boot camp. He's one of the RDCs, so I don't think it would go over well if he had to be <laughs> oh, You should do it anyway. I know. He's leaving soon. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so on my website, I have a website. It's um, you have to put the www dot in front of it because I can't figure out how to get it to load without it. I'm still working on that, but it's bootsongroundcoffee.co. Um, okay. I don't know. I can send that to you. And yeah. if you have show notes, you're like, I don't know how this works. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah that would be great. We can um we can upload it in the um when this is over and it gets published on the thing. Okay. <laughs> we can put it in there. So after this show airs, just give it to me and we'll we'll put it in the um in a chat so people can okay. kind of see it. And um yeah, so I love coffee. Um the Navy made it worse because obviously they would have to stay up for 72 hours at a time sometimes. <laughs> And um, so, like I, like I said, I drink like the sludge coffee. Um, like I will let that bitch sit there for like two days and gain strength. And then, I'm not joking. Yet. <laughs> and um, I only drink my coffee black, just like I drink my whiskey. I say I drink my coffee neat. Um, so I don't add anything to it, and I like it to be like super caffeinated. Like I want it to punch down walls. <laughs> like that's the coffee i like just going down your throat fighting <laughs> oh yes like so when i was in right this um this one senior chief we were on the we had just i was in a squadron um and i was in a amphibious unit so i was one of two females in an all-male combat unit for maritime prepositioning forces um so a lot of my my time is um you know small and um like you know small craft pin and then i was in a, a squadron and so they were like um we have all these drills coming up and we have all these you know flights and like fucking exhausted and nobody's making coffee right and like what what the fuck are we gonna do we can't even fly you know and he was like you you look like you can make coffee and i was like <laughs> I was like, I can make coffee, but I'm going to like put a label warning on how I make coffee. And he was like, and I was like, okay, like, listen, sir, um, I don't know what to tell you, but that last chief I made coffee for him, he said he was up for almost three days. So if you want my coffee, you're going to operate, but you're going to be wired. And he was like, that's what the fuck I need. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I made my coffee. And I'm not gonna lie, like we have one of those, um, you know, silver roots ones, and it was just like, I made it with maybe, I don't want to say how many bags of of coffee I put in there, but it was a lot. It was significant. And then all of a sudden, everybody was like, the it got out, and then I they were like, she has to make coffee, and I was like, this is not in my job description, y'all. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they were like, well, ma'am um like you see this you see this little star and i was like so and they were like the other one came he said you see this eagle right here and i was like yeah captain and he was like they need you to make the coffee <laughs> i was like is this a direct order sir and he was like yep, pretty okay. much okay pretty much so which is your strongest coffee like What's your um the espresso? The espresso it, one. Yes. yes. So the espresso. Um the darkest, like boldest, most flavorful, like punch mm -hmm. in the face is gonna be the mid-watch, but mid -watch, the yeah. one with the most caffeine is gonna be the light roast because all the caffeine isn't roasted out, so it kind of is like backwards there. So, so yeah, let's talk about that, right? Because people, and I assumed that early in the beginning, right? I was like, oh, well, if it's the darkest roast, it must have the most caffeine. And that's actually not true. Like, it, it, that's fake news, y'all. And it's actually the lightest roast actually is the strongest. So explain to these people who don't understand coffee, uh, give, give them an education because I had to learn <laughs> 
I don't roast my own coffee. So there's a disclaimer there. I have a right. local roaster like 20 minutes away from my house. So, but right. I do know that the longer you roast the coffee, the less caffeine that it has. It's kind of like when you boil or steam a vegetable, the longer you cook it, the mm -hmm. less nutrients it has. It's right. kind of like the same thing. So the lightest roast is going to have the most caffeine. <laughs> right. It does. And um, I, just, I don't know how many people don't know that, but it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. But if you want like a really, if you're drinking coffee for like flavor, right, because you want hints of vanilla or citrus, you know, kind of like bourbon, um, then you go with it. It's true. It is. Uh, then it's like a darker roast. Like, mm -hmm. So you get that, that flavor. What have you found that's the most exciting for coffee? Because you cook, obviously, and so you kind of get to like cook with coffee beans now and kind of, you know, make some of these creations. So what do you feel like's the most, you know, thing that you like the most about creating different roasts with coffee? Um, I like sampling it. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my roaster, she is like okay i'm gonna just whip up a bunch of different like blends know, yeah like variants or blends and yeah. you, which one you prefer so mm -hmm. i was i was trying like i had nine i think that i had to sample one day and to pick a roast and <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I, I love tasting what she gives me and the mm -hmm. espresso that it blew my mind when I tasted it. I was like, I'm not one that can be like, oh, I taste mm, hints of chocolate and citrus. Like, no, if it tastes like coffee, it's coffee. I just know right. if it tastes good or if I don't like it. <laughs> right. Oh, so there's that. But I, I can't like taste like the under notes of things. So I'm like, right. this espresso kind of tastes like vanilla and she's like yeah we had we figured out which bean is kind of vanilla y mm. and she added that i'm like oh this was amazing but amazing. I, love, I love going in and like figuring out like for the flavored coffees what kind of flavors that we can come up with now we're actually working on i feel like i'm stuttering um <laughs> we're working Sorry. on a full time <laughs> i get like my brain gets too far ahead and i'm just like <laughs> Oh, good. Um, <laughs> we're working on a flavored coffee that's going to stay like with the full line and not be just a limited edition flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be one of my favorite, based off of one of my favorite ones from Hawaii. And it's going to be Whoa. a vanilla macadamia. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love Definitely that. Definitely coming in the new year. <laughs> awesome. That sounds delicious. Yes. So what other things that you think that, you know, you have these blends and these other ones that are coming, people can go on your Etsy and get them. A portion of it goes to different veteran nonprofits. What do you think that your future holds? So like, what is your ultimate, like, I'm, I'm badass here. I'm making coffee. It's veteran owned. Um, like you guys are going to move to Illinois to finish out your husband's military service after you've already done your own military service. So when you guys finally get to transition to final place, what's the, what's the goals? Like, are you guys going to open a coffee shop? What are you doing? Um, I like having the coffee and selling and I don't want to have another coffee shop. I liked it while I was operating my own, but I'm like, mm, okay, that's good. Maybe after my kid is like grown up and out of the house, maybe I'll do something, but I'm like, it was, it's a hassle. So I'm like, no. Um, so I, I just, I want it to like grow to some big, like amazing thing where we can donate like thousands of dollars a month. Like that would be just mind blowing yeah. and so exciting. And I want to get it on, like a retail store in the, like on their shelves or have it be like what a coffee shop serves as their normal. Right. <laughs> so I don't know if you know, but I'm, I'm going to try to get you this information. So Macy's is having this like select um, thing for entrepreneurs that are veterans hmm. and they are, they literally are opening their programs so that veterans can have their products 
be sold at Macy's. So I think that's probably um, a pathway of information that I can probably hook you up with and give you that. Yeah, I'm actually in this um, veterans um, program right now that I signed up for, and they have um, like kind of like a boot camp for um, veteran entrepreneurs, specifically for women. And um, so I'm going to give you that information. So I think that you should <laughs> apply there. But you know, like for me, um, you know, I do a lot of advocacy work, and so you know, I don't have any things to, to sell, right? But for yeah. you. This is a great avenue, especially because you want your product um, to be as everywhere as it can be. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a great spot for that because um, Macy's is really they've donated money to make sure that this um, this entrepreneur program can start um, for veterans. And they're really looking to help women, uh, women veterans get, launch. And so they have like this this program. And I think you're kind of perfect for that would um, be a very exciting i would appreciate that <laughs> I'm, gonna that. I'm gonna give you that information because i think it's amazing that one they're donating to try to have this this program get started um to have entrepreneurs launch off but they're supporting veterans as well but they're also saying hey guys we have this this space in our store and um kind of fill this stuff out <laughs> and try to help get it here and yeah. so i mean that's that's a way better than you know, we're going to have a veterans Macy day float for, for veterans. Like they are really trying to thank veterans for their service. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a great opportunity. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of things maybe, um, maybe you're not familiar with for entrepreneurship for, for veterans that I will be more than happy to kind of send your way. Um, because you never know who knows someone that mm -hmm. can get your product in a different store um, be, and have it just be on Etsy, right? Which yeah. I love. It's a great place to sell anything. Yeah. Um, but seeing it in a, a store is kind of cool, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, would probably cry. <laughs> that would be so, so <laughs> dope, right? <laughs> For yeah. you to be able to have it. And you're a veteran. And so I kind of feel like, you know, there's, there's other coffee makers, but they're not a veteran. They're not giving back to other veterans like you are. And so, I mean, I definitely feel like you have the opportunity to grow. And I think that the sky should always be the no limit. Right? There should be no limit. Like the sky is not the limit. Like we have NASA. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We go into space, y'all. Um, so Shout out to the Space Force. I don't know what y'all do yet, but um, <laughs> they had cool uniforms when I went and visited in Florida and I found some amazing scotch there. So, I mean, I'm not going to be a hater. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, <laughs> it's a little different. So, again, I want you guys to uh, recognize this woman's greatness fellow Navy veteran here um, and she has different blends. So I'm going to let her speak on it again. I'm going to let her give her her website uh, at the end of the show, you know, before this is uh, after this is published, we'll make sure that her Etsy thing, um, her link is there. So, you know, boots on the ground coffee. So take it away, shipmate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I also forgot to mention before like the whole reasoning behind starting the brand was that whenever I deployed, I needed a coffee that I loved because, you know, the cook on the Mastex, I didn't like that coffee. It was, right. like, it was, it was like nasty. <laughs> it wasn't even name brand. It was like some random thing in a bag. It was gross. Um, and a French press and then like a deployment proof mug that could really take a beating, you know, rolling around on the ship. And yeah. so I was like, how oh, cool would that be to have like a like a crate or something like a coffee crate? And like have all of that to where people can send it, like friends or family can send it to their deployed friends or family. And yeah. it could be like a deployment box. And I actually launched it today on my website. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention that earlier. That's critical. That was like the whole um Mazel tov. Yes, the like, whole this is thing. A big thing. <laughs> So the, whole reason I started the, brand. Brand. <laughs> the whole reason I started the brand and I finally was able to launch it. I didn't want to wait any longer to like start the brand. So we just started with just coffee and I was like, okay, cool. I ended up with like um, a veterans small business grant. So I use that 
and I Love got it. all my product in and I just got the last of my product like last week. And yeah, so that's up on my site. You have to like click on the product and then it'll bring like, oh, do you want to add it to a bundle? And it's just a whole thing. It's very exciting. Um, but yeah, so I have, I have the Etsy that you can only buy coffee. There's not going to be any merchandise. There's not going to be no deployment crates or anything on there. And then I have, it's a Shopify website, but it's my own personal domain. So it's bootsongroundcoffee.co. Um, you can follow me on Facebook on Boots on Ground Coffee and Instagram at Boots on Ground Coffee. Right. I, that's all I have for social media. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm so stoked about this deployment coffee because I don't think people, well, first, I don't think people really get it, right? And then, um, too, it's it's nice. Like, I, I also don't know if other branches are as crazy as we are about coffee mugs. Like, um, oh, <laughs> that is really like a navy not. thing, right? Where you will, um, you will fight somebody off of your cup. <laughs> like, yes. Um. Yeah. Like your cup is like it's it's yours. Um. And like we drink coffee a lot, and so I mean that's amazing that you guys are going to be able to send those to people who are on deployment, and they're actually going to have good ass coffee. Like that's. Yes. That's dope. Like super, you are saving the fleet. <laughs> <laughs> it is, that is an angel level. Um, <laughs> there. That's, that's saving the fleet right there. Um, what would you say if somebody was going to travel to Italy and maybe they're going to take a Mac flight, right? Um, and this person could maybe be me. Um, but <laughs> where, <laughs> Where would you recommend the best place in Italy where you were stationed at for espresso? Like, what's the spot? Oh, my gosh. So they serve it fucking everywhere. I know. So this place. So it depends on where you're going, I guess. If you're taking a Mac flight, you might be going to Capel. Right. So near Naples. Um, you're going to want to go like 30 minutes away from where that airport is. And uh -huh. I actually don't even know the name of this place, but me and my Italian friend, I made some really great friends out there that were mm -hmm. Italian Filipinos. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> oh. and we would be like, oh, yeah, let's go out for a coffee. And they had delicious coffee. But then we found out that they served mojitos. And so our, hey, let's go out for coffee was key or code for we're going to go get some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> like this little cafe and they just have like this delicious coffee and there's another one which i think is like i keep forgetting about it but i think it's like just down the road and they serve croissants but they're called coronettos or something like that i never learned italian and you can get that there's like a whole big ass menu and they like cut it in half and they stuff it with like candy bars like covered Ooh. in chocolate and like it's just this whole thing and that's all in La it's all in lago patria so okay that's you get there or yes. whoever this is that's going <laughs> lago patria it's near the nato base so you just have to go into the town next to the nato yeah. base <laughs> i love that yeah i always love like going to local places i'm not a fan of like drinking commercialized especially coffee mm -hmm. um, i'm not a fan of that so if i'm in country somewhere i really kind of try to um one enjoy what they're having as their culture and uh, you know accept some of their customs and i fucking love coffee so <laughs> you can get it everywhere they serve it like all I, over you would just be like pulled up getting gas and they're like coffee no. i'm like yes yes, <laughs> like, yes. Oh, i used yes. to um, i used to be friends with this uh, italian baker and so he had his own his own um, bakery that was well known. Ooh. Everyone would come like from all over the state to go there. He was just amazing. And I would go in there and he would get me an espresso and we would just sit down and talk, like talk about <laughs> baseball or, you know, I'm a diehard for baseball and football. <laughs> and so, and go Rangers right now, we're playing hockey. Um, so I would just like Ooh, enjoy it. <laughs> Not a sports person. I am. <laughs> I literally date guys off of sports teams. Is that serious for me? Um, I screen them out. I'm, I'm like, I don't care that you have lickable abs. You are on the wrong team. You are my enemy. You are 
affiliate. Like, <laughs> you think those abs were going to work? Hey, they don't. Go on the candle. Oh, oh she got it. It's what, what cake. It? Kinetic oh, sand. A yeah. kinetic sand cake. <laughs> All right. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Can you take it back out there? Thank you. Uh -huh, I like it. like it. I'll eat the rest later. <laughs> <laughs> he brought me a Play Doh pizza the other day, and I like took a bite of it. Like, I know it's Play Doh. And he goes, No, it's Play Doh. Don't eat that. <laughs> I'm like, Well, I'm glad you know. <laughs> That's great. When I was a kid in pre K, I didn't know it was Play Doh, and I literally I ate that shit. <laughs> He does not like stick random things in his mouth, which I'm super grateful for. So it's just funny that I was just like, okay, yep. And he goes, no. <laughs> it doesn't. Good. It doesn't. Um, I think it should, but you know, it'd probably make more issues. <laughs> I was like, that would be dangerous. <laughs> you know, for the well, blue eaters of the world. I mean, I am living proof that it didn't kill me. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I survived pre K. I, <laughs> I ate some Play Doh, y'all. It was okay. So, but that's awesome. So, Katie, thank you so much for, for coming on and um, check out bootsonground.co, www. Got to have it in front of it. Check out her Etsy. She's on Instagram. Um, she's on Facebook and like, really, if you know somebody that's deploying right now or deployed, I'm literally telling you like for the holidays, this deployment box, yo, I mean, it needed to be launched for the holidays. I wasn't right? going to launch it yet, but I'm like, I need to, I need to launch it before December so people can send it. Yeah. It's for the holidays. <laughs> like, that, like if you don't do anything good today, like, <laughs> Get the deployment box for your friend, your military family member that is deployed, because especially if they're in the Navy, right? Like giving them their own mug to have and being able to have coffee that, I mean, that's clout right there. Like when they're, like, when they're talking about their family members that actually gave a fuck, they're gonna be like, hey, yo, uncle, he sent me this deployment box. This shit was nice. <laughs> It got me through my deployment. Like I was going to hurt somebody, but every day I was able to drink my coffee and be okay. <laughs> and yes. like, that's really it. All right, guys. Well, that's everything for us today. Again, if you've been raped in the military or you're going through depression or your PTSD, please reach out to my foundation. Um, you are not alone. Every last one of us, especially the people that are in my crew, have gone through suicidal ideation or have attempted suicide. And as you guys know, I tried to kill myself in 2021, put a Glock 17 in my mouth and pulled the trigger, and I'm still here. So that means that I know the way that's forward, right? And so the darkness that you're in doesn't mean you have to stay there and let us help you get out of that. Genuinely, we don't want our brothers and sisters to suffer anymore. And you're not alone. And maybe you can't talk about what happened to you in the military yet, but you don't have to come and speak publicly about it like I do. But you can at least hit my DM up and say, hey, this is what's going on with me. And I, I really just need some help and we'll get it for you. So <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming on the show. And I appreciate it, guys. And so we are we're out. Have a great fucking weekend. Marine Corps birthdays on Friday. Shout out to my Marines. And then Veterans Day is on a Saturday. So y'all have no excuse. You got three days. Three days to get this drinking in and get back to work on Monday, bitches. We're out. <laughs> That's the show for today, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with an all-new show. And remember, you can listen to us again and again. The podcast of this radio show is available right after we go off the air tonight. Anywhere that you can get your podcast episodes. And thanks for joining us today. I'd like to take a moment to talk about something close to my heart. Military Broadcast Radio has been doing incredible work to support our veterans and bring their voices to the world. 
They rely on your generous donations and your dedicated volunteer hours to make it happen. I encourage you to consider supporting NBR in any way, form that you can. Use this QR code that's attached to the picture, or you can go to our website at mbradio.us. That's mikebravoradio.us. To learn more about how you can donate or volunteer even just an hour a week from your home, help make a difference in the lives of our veterans. Because once again, we're all here for you and not for us. We're giving a veterans a voice.